The royal family has long been the subject of ongoing media coverage and public criticism, especially after Harry and Meghan's recent decision to disassociate from the Windsor family, revealing a shocking decades-long secret to the world. Harry has a secret sister who had been meticulously hidden from everyone. This video will explore why Prince Harry's sister was always kept a secret due to the love triangle that almost burnt the entire monarchy to the ground. The Royal Family – An Extensive and Impressive Family Tree The British royal family we will focus on today is also known as the House of Windsor, which began in 1917. Following the First World War, the family renamed themselves from the German saxe coburg gotha This was partly due to the growing anti-German sentiment across Europe following the war. King Charles III, who is in power today, is the great-grandson of the first Windsor monarch, King George V. As one of Queen Victoria's 20 grandsons, George V did not expect to be king, for he was third in the line of succession. However, his plans changed following the death of his brother, Prince Albert Victor, in 1910. After his death, George ascended to the throne in 1910. King George V served as the King of England and the Emperor of India until he died in 1936. The royal family we know today comprises direct descendants of the original king. George V, King Charles's great-grandmother, was Queen Mary. Royal by birth, Mary's grandfather was King George III. In an exciting turn of events, Mary was first engaged to Prince Albert Victor, the eldest son of King Edward VII. But, following Albert Victor's death, Mary agreed to marry his brother, the future King George V. They married in 1893 and had six children. Two of their children would become reigning monarchs. The eldest son of George V and Queen Mary was Edward, who became King Edward VIII. After his father died in 1936, Edward ascended to the throne. Only a few months later, he threw the country into a crisis. He proposed to Wallace Simpson, an American divorcee. Her annulment became the subject of controversy for Edward, who, as monarch, was also the acting head of the Church of England. At the time, the Church had strict rules prohibiting divorced people from remarrying if their former spouse was still alive. Therefore, the government publicly opposed the marriage. At a crossroads, Edward abdicated in December of 1936. He was succeeded by his younger brother, Albert, who would become King George VI and father to Queen Elizabeth II. Edward's reign was one of the shortest in British history at just 326 days. He was later named Duke of Windsor and married Simpson in 1937. This early instance of familial sacrifice for the sake of upholding appearances and traditions is one of the earliest indications of what is yet to come for the House of Windsor. Following Edward's abdication in 1936, Albert took the throne, assuming the name King George VI. He married Lady Elizabeth Bode Lyon, and they had two daughters, Princess Margaret and the future Queen Elizabeth II. During George's reign, the dissolution of the British Empire and the formation of the British Commonwealth were finalized, making George the first head of the Commonwealth and the final Emperor of India. George was succeeded by his daughter when he died in 1952 at 56. Queen Elizabeth II was born in 1926 and became the presumptive heir to the throne following her father's ascension, George VI, in 1936. She entered an engagement with Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark in 1947. Shockingly, Elizabeth had first met Philip when she was only 13 years old. They married in 1947 and had four children together, Charles, Anne, Andrew, and Edward. After George VI died in 1952, Elizabeth ascended to the throne and became British history's longest reigning and longest living monarch. She would reign for 70 years before she died in 2022, leaving behind a legacy incomparable to rulers before her. Riddled with drama, controversy, speculation, and tragedy, her son Charles succeeded her reign in 2022. King Charles III is the current reigning monarch of the United Kingdom, head of the Commonwealth, and keeper of many secrets and scandals. Born in 1948, 
Charles was the eldest child of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip. Educated at several institutions, including Cambridge University, Cheam, and Gordonstown, and serving in the Royal Air Force and Navy, Charles was the first heir to the British monarchy who held a university degree. Charles was the first royal to do many things, including his involvement in a love triangle that would taint the legacies of himself, his children, and his late wife. An icon in the making. Diana Frances Spencer was born on July 1, 1961 in Norfolk. She and her three siblings were the children of John Spencer, Viscount Althorpe, and Frances Spencer, Viscountess Althorpe. Frances and John Spencer leased Park House on Sandringham Estate from Queen Elizabeth II, whom Diana referred to as Aunt Lilibet since childhood. As a child, she was fond of animals, keeping gerbils, hamsters, a pony, and a white guinea pig named Peanuts, who won first prize at a local pet fair. In 1967, John and Francis Spencer divorced after Francis ran away with a married businessman. Consequently, Lady Diana was sent to several boarding schools in Europe. By the time she was 16, Diana returned to England as an au pair for an American couple. Diana was only 16 years old when she met Charles. It was November 1977, and Charles, 29, was dating her sister, Sarah Spencer. After the two got to know each other, Diana excitedly told her schoolmates about what had happened. I made a lot of noise, and he liked that, and he came up to me after dinner and we had a big dance, Diana said. In November of 1978, Diana was invited to a dance at Buckingham Palace, although the interactions between her and Charles would wane for the two years that followed. In 1980, Charles and Diana were guests at a country weekend. And this is when Charles began to view Diana as a credible romantic prospect. The relationship progressed after Diana was invited aboard the Royal Yacht Britannia for a sailing weekend. She was then invited to Balmoral Castle to meet the royal family, where she was reportedly well received by the Queen and other significant monarchy members. The paparazzi photographed Diana at Balmoral, sending the press into a frenzy. In January 1981, Prince Philip wrote a letter to Charles urging him to either propose to Diana or end things with her for the sake of her reputation. Charles saw this as an order. On February 6, 1981, Charles proposed to Diana at Windsor Castle. He expected her to take some time to consider the arrangement and was surprised when she agreed without hesitation. The engagement was announced to the public 18 days later, accompanied by an infamous dialogue exchange from the couple. When asked by an interviewer if they were in love, Diana replied, Of course, to which Charles replied, Whatever in love means. Diana left home and resided at Buckingham Place until the wedding. According to her biographer, her life was incredibly lonely. She was the first English woman to marry the first in line for the throne in over 300 years, and she was also the only royal bride to have worked a paying job before entering the royal family. This established Diana as a relatable, approachable figure with which the British public could identify. Although she was of royal status, she had once been an ordinary girl. This introduced Diana as the people's princess, cemented in later acts of selflessness and rebellion against the monarchy. Diana Spencer, the People's Princess Diana was only 20 when she became Princess of Wales and married Charles on July 29, 1981. The televised event occurred at St. Paul's Cathedral, garnering 750 million worldwide viewers and over 600,000 spectators lining the streets. At the altar, Diana accidentally reversed the order of the groom's names and omitted the word obey from her traditional vows evoking some general criticism. However, her authenticity was infectious, and Diana offered a refreshing take on royalty that many viewers appreciated. Despite the seemingly upbeat tone of the ceremony, both parties were troubled. Diana allegedly discovered a bracelet Charles had stashed the night before the wedding. The bracelet was engraved with the letters G and F, alluding to Girl Friday. Charles's nickname for Camilla Parker Bowles. Charles reportedly wept over Camilla, who had previously dated the heir and began an affair with him while married to her first husband. 
Camilla is one of the most infamous and polarizing figures in this story and was instrumental in the concealment of Lauren Lopes from the public eye. As Charles cried, Diana suffered an ongoing battle with bulimia and dealt with the knowledge of her fiancé's infidelity, further isolating her. Their first public engagement as a married couple was in October of 1981. Diana and Charles visited Wales, and the crowds were only interested in their princess. We want Diana, the people shouted, showing little attention to Charles. This would become a recurring theme in Diana's life, even bringing the term Diana mania into the common vernacular. Diana famously advocated for AIDS patients in the 1980s, a stark departure from the prevailing stigmatization of AIDS patients that dominated the era. Most notably, she was not opposed to making physical contact with AIDS patients, unbelievably becoming the first British royal to do so in 1987. HIV does not make people dangerous to know. You can shake their hands and give them a hug. Heaven knows they need it. What's more, you can share their homes, their workplaces, and their playgrounds and toys. Diana. Diana's progressive stance on world issues opposed the Queen's standards. Queen Elizabeth allegedly discouraged Diana from advocating for AIDS patients, instead suggesting that she find something more pleasant. Diana refused to compromise her moral beliefs, deepening the cracks in her relationship with the royal family. It wouldn't be until after her sensationalized divorce from Charles that Diana would travel to South Africa to meet with Nelson Mandela, with whom she would create a fund dedicated to helping people who have AIDS. Diana's commitment to using her celebrity status for good is one of the many reasons that the general public fell in love with her. She offered a refreshingly humanistic approach to royal delegacy that the common folk had neither observed nor been given access to in prior reigns. In November of 1981, Diana's pregnancy was announced. Only 12 weeks after the baby was conceived, Diana fell down a flight of stairs at Sandringham, and other than some bruising, escaped relatively unharmed. She would later confess that she threw herself down the stairs due to feelings of self-loathing and inadequacy, reinforcing the hellish environment of her awkward marriage to Charles, who was in love with another woman. Diana gave birth to Prince William in 1982, prompting an intense battle with postpartum depression. Two years later, she gave birth to Prince Harry. During this second pregnancy, it is said that Diana and Charles were at their most vital point, although Diana kept the news of Harry's gender a secret from Charles, who was hoping for a girl. However, the pleasantries wouldn't last long as grave issues arose only five years into the couple's marriage. These issues would seal the fate of Princess Diana, Charles and Camilla, and the secret royal sister. Charles, Diana, and Camilla, a doomed menage, a trois. Only five years into the marriage, Diana and Charles were more distant than ever. It was in 1986 that Diana began an affair with James Hewitt, who had been the family's former writing instructor. The media even speculated Hewitt, instead of Charles, to be Harry's father based on their physical similarities. However, Hewitt has staunchly denied this as his affair with Diana began two years after Harry's birth. That same year, Charles became entirely consumed by his relationship with Camilla. Maddened by her lack of agency and respect amongst the royals, Diana confronted Camilla at a birthday party in 1989. Diana said to the older woman, I obviously am in the way, and it must be hell for both of you, but I do know what is going on. Don't treat me like an idiot. By 1992, the royal family had already tried and failed to intervene. The public negatively received leaked videotapes from Charles and Diana, respectively, in which they explicitly confirmed the rumors of their troubled marriage and alluded to either affair. That same year, Andrew Morton's book, Diana, Her True Story, was released, and a media storm on Diana and Charles was subsequently released. The book was shocking in its revelations about Diana's jealousy concerning her husband's affair. Questions arrived regarding whether Charles would be suitable for monarchy if he divorced Diana and remarried Camilla. At the time, strict policies regarding divorce in the church were still upheld, hearkening back to King Edward VIII's abdication of the throne. Later that year, 
Prime Minister John Major announced Charles and Diana's separation. In an attempt to rectify his reputation following Camilligate the explicit and suggestive phone calls between him and Camilla that were leaked in 1993, Charles hired a documentary film crew to follow him for a year and a half. However, his efforts had the opposite effect upon the film's release. When the filmmaker asked if Charles had been honorable and faithful in his marriage, Charles said, yes, yes, until it became irretrievably broken down, us both having tried. He went on to refer to Camilla as a friend who would be in his life for the foreseeable future. Two years later, Camilla announced her divorce from Andrew Parker Bowles. In an infamous televised interview with Martin Bashir, Diana is asked if Camilla factored into her divorce from Charles. Diana states, Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Shortly after the interview, their divorce was finalized. Diana appeared out of the woods, ready to embark on a prolific philanthropic career, bursting with opportunities and excitement. However, everything changed on August 31, 1997, when Diana was killed in an infamous car wreck about which the public has widely speculated, theorized, and pointed fingers. Following Diana's death, the public was in mass mourning. She was beloved by almost everyone who knew her name, and she connected with an entire generation in a way that others of her status had not considered. Charles used the tragedy to legitimize his relationship with Camilla, confirming a British tabloid's report that Camilla had met Prince William. But the Queen, like the general public, did not approve of the adulterous nature of their entanglement. She famously declined to attend Charles's 50th birthday party because Camilla was on the guest list. In time, however, things changed. In 2000, Queen Elizabeth II attended a party at Highgrove where Camilla was also in attendance, signaling her approval of their relationship to the public. However, the public was unsatisfied. Everyone knew about Charles's infidelity and the unanimous public love for Diana and her devastating loss was fresh in their minds. Camilla represented the old-fashioned ways of the monarchy that had grown stale and unpalatable to the common folk. Nobody, other than Charles and Camilla, perhaps, wanted to see Camilla take Diana's spot. Camilla Parker Bowles, from the most hated woman in Britain to the Queen Consort. After the public crisis of Diana's tragic death, Camilla and Charles were forced to keep their relationship on the back burner. Diana had previously referred to Camilla as a Rottweiler, and she had newly been labeled the most hated woman in Britain. After an initial struggle for the Queen's approval, Charles and Camilla moved into Clarence House. To subdue public backlash, the royal family issued a statement in which they promised that taxpayer funds would not be used to decorate Camilla's bedroom. They embarked on an uphill battle to rehabilitate both parties' images. Camilla was a non-negotiable for Charles, so they hurriedly conceived a plan of action. This primarily entailed the concealment of Camilla from most public outings, and this would not be the final instance of royal deception. Slowly but surely, Camilla was seen here or there with Charles, whether it was their arrival in the same car to a birthday party, shaking hands at a sports game, or an instant of linked visibility at a royal function. By 2004, she accompanied Charles to nearly all of his social engagements, prompting the media to consider the possibility of Charles's remarriage. Polls conducted in 2004 indicated that the public was, for the most part, in support of the couple's marriage. Despite her efforts to rebuild her reputation, Camilla still received backlash from Diana supporters, who wrote and submitted rants to local and national newspapers. In 2005, Charles and Camilla announced their engagement and wed two months later. Camilla was given the title of Duchess of Cornwall as opposed to Princess of Wales. Notably, the Queen did not attend the ceremony, yet hosted a later reception at Windsor Castle. Upon Charles's ascension to the throne on September 8, 2022, Camilla became Queen Consort. Queen Elizabeth II has previously stated, When, in the fullness of time, my son Charles becomes king, I know you will give him and his wife Camilla the same support that you have given me. She continued, 
And it is my sincere wish that when that time comes, Camilla will be known as Queen Consort as she continues her own loyal service. Later that year, following the Queen's death, Camilla became Queen Consort 51 years after meeting Charles. We are finally ready to divulge the secrets regarding Camilla's hidden daughter and the princess the world never knew about. Prince Harry and Prince William's secret royal sister, Laura Parker Bowles, is the half-sister to Prince William and Prince Harry. Their story begins in childhood, during which their parents' involvement in an ultra-controversial love triangle had a hefty impact on the children's interactions, posing a significant threat to their closeness. Due to the contentious nature of their parents' entanglement, William and Harry sadly remained distant from Laura as they grew up. In fact, according to a Royal Reporter's 2010 book, Harry and William, Laura and William didn't get along. William and Laura used to have terrible fights over who was to blame for their broken homes. William would blame Camilla for all the hurt she had caused his mother, which would send Laura into a rage. Laura was not having any of it. She would take a hard line and fire back at William, your father has ruined my life. Laura grew accustomed to criticism from an early age due to her closeness to her mother, who was the recipient of endless amounts of hate and disapproval after Diana's death and the revelation of Charles's infidelity. Familiar with the fragility of the court of public opinion, Laura decided from an early age that she would keep a low profile to protect her self-esteem. Camilla's other child is Tom Parker Bowles, a British food writer who has seen commercial success by publishing seven cookbooks. Additionally, Tom has been featured in magazines such as GQ and Esquire, and he has even appeared as a guest judge on shows like Master Chef and The F Word. While Tom appears to thrive in the spotlight, Laura has taken her semi-recent adjustment from Camilla's daughter to the King's stepdaughter with a different approach. She prefers to keep the majority of her personal life hidden from the public eye. Laura is an art curator who gave up her mother's last name when she married Harry Lopes, a former Calvin Klein model and current accountant in 2006. Compared to other members of the House of Windsor, Laura's life has been virtually hidden from the public eye. We now know that this is assumedly due to her childhood experience, watching her mother fall victim to the relentless, voracious wrath of the disapproving public. But in recent years, Camilla has begun frequently acknowledging her daughter in public appearances. Additionally, as an art curator, Laura occasionally makes a rare red carpet appearance at events within the art realm. Associated individuals have repeatedly made Laura's decision to distance themselves from the royal family during the Windsor reign. The subjects of constant scrutiny and invasions of privacy, the current generation of royal couplings has marked a resurgence in the public's interest. Brothers and princes Harry and William and their infamous brides Meghan and Kate have reignited the public's intrigue and ushered in a new wave of press attention reminiscent of Diana, Camilla, and Charles's love triangle. History repeats itself. Kate Middleton married Prince William on April 29, 2011. Kate grew up in Buckleberry, Berkshire, and studied art history at university. She worked several retail jobs and pursued charitable endeavors for most of her early adulthood. In 2001, she met William, her future husband and apparent heir to the British throne. During their courtship, Kate was presented to the masses as a refined, effortless, exceptionally graceful woman. The community quickly fell in love with her modern exuberance and royal mannerisms. In 2010, William proposed to Kate using the engagement ring that had once belonged to his mother, Diana, Princess of Wales. Their wedding reportedly garnered an estimated 300 million global viewers, while an additional 26 million British viewers tuned in. The event was highly anticipated as Kate represented the new wave of royal fashion society and pursuits that appealed to the public. The wedding also introduced Kate's new title of Duchess of Cambridge, which she would uphold for a decade. In 2022, however, she became Princess of Wales when King Charles III made William the Prince of Wales. Kate had stolen the general public's hearts, who likely identified something within her reminiscent of Diana, 
However, her likeness to the former Princess of Wales would be replaced by the introduction of Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle represents a turning point in the history of the Windsor House. Meghan, an American former actress of black and white racial descent, was immediately subject to criticism and cruelty when her relationship with Prince Harry came to light in 2016. The outcry became so intense that the palace was forced to release an official statement condemning the public for the abuse and harassment Meghan received from the press. Part of the statement read, he knows commentators will say this is the price she has to pay and that this is all part of the game. He strongly disagrees. This is not a game. It is her life and his. In November 2017, William and Meghan's engagement was celebrated alongside Queen Elizabeth II, Prince Philip, Charles, Queen Consort, William, and Kate. According to reports, Meghan's introduction to the Queen went smoothly. Following the engagement announcement, Meghan's father took it upon himself to exploit his daughter's situation for personal gain. He was caught staging paparazzi photos and opted out of attending her nuptials. This prompted Prince Charles to walk Meghan down the aisle. Conflicting reports arose regarding Kate and Meghan's friendship. Some outlets claimed the women had been fighting over Princess Charlotte's outfit for the ceremony, although Meghan clarified the reports a few years later. Meghan revealed that Kate had been the one to make her cry in the days leading up to her wedding. However, she also stated that Kate acknowledged her wrongdoing and thoughtfully attempted reconciliation. By this point, Meghan had wholly entered the realm of public knowledge. Additionally, she proved to be a polarizing figure. It appeared that roughly half of the population loved her, while the other half despised her. There are many possible reasons for this divide, likely due to the British media's racially motivated coverage and subsequent slander of Meghan that similarly small-minded individuals perpetuated. While the royal family made every attempt to conceal the presence of internal tension from the public eye, we now know that Meghan and Harry were privately dealing with an unjust, discriminatory network of people whose only priority was upholding appearances and traditions. In May 2018, Harry and Meghan officially wed at Windsor Castle, where 29 million people tuned in to watch the broadcast. What should have been a day focused on the union of two people in love was used by the press as yet another excuse to crucify Meghan due to something as superficial as her clothing. From comments made by Katy Perry about the recent bride's wedding dress to a storm of Twitter hate prompted by an exposed bra strap, it was clear that Meghan's critics would utilize any misstep to validate their inner hatred and racism. The worst criticism of Meghan can be found in the relentless comparisons between her and Kate Middleton. From the moment of Meghan's debut, haters have critiqued her on the absurd grounds that she is not as similar to Kate as they'd like her to be. Every aspect of Meghan's life has been violently condemned, with attackers commenting on her fashion sense or her relationship history. The arraignments are underscored by racism and classism, with critics failing to isolate a concrete source of their dislike. In May of 2019, Meghan and Harry welcomed their son Archie. But Meghan has since revealed that the inner workings of the monarchy were far more sinister than had previously been led on. There were, reportedly, conversations regarding Archie's skin tone, with concern over the possibility of him being darker than the rest of the royal family, who has historically been comprised of almost entirely Caucasian individuals. Meghan was consistently cast out by the Windsor family, revealing that she just didn't want to be alive anymore during the early days of her marriage. The couple decided in 2020 to step away from their duties as senior royals, due to Meghan and Harry's insurmountable wave of backlash. The event was a massive shock to the public, who would not be privy to the real reasons for their departure until a few years later, when Meghan publicly spoke about her experiences in an interview with Oprah, and Harry released his tell-all memoir, Spare Harry and Meghan Now Live in Montecito, California. In Spare, Harry admitted that he became increasingly more concerned over the safety of his relationship. Harry experienced the death of his mother firsthand. Diana, like Meghan, 
had been a controversial figure that polarized the masses. Queen Elizabeth II's approval of both women was semi-convincing at best, and the world is very familiar with the explosive end to Diana's story. Beyond this, the perpetrator of Diana's death has been widely conspired by the masses, and one theory even points fingers at the Queen, claiming that she orchestrated the event to eliminate the spectacle and possible risks of Diana's involvement with the royal family. Many have assumed that Harry and Meghan's departure directly responded to the mystery surrounding Diana's death and the Windsors revealed disapproval. With the departure of Harry and Meghan, Prince William and Princess Kate are the remaining heirs to the throne that reside in the public eye. William and Kate represent the traditional ways of the monarchy, offering a digestible presentation of royal values that both intrigues and comforts the public. However, in very recent news, the whereabouts of Kate Middleton are unknown. This has led the public to speculate regarding the princess's health, with some even considering the worst. By analyzing the cyclical nature of relationship drama in the British royal family, it is easy to draw parallels between the love triangle of Diana, Camilla and Charles and the rivalry between Harry and William. The House of Windsor represents the ruling class of Britain, yet they will never be afforded the simple luxury of privacy. As a result of this, Laura Lopez, Harry and William's secret stepsister, chose to lead a relatively private life concealed from the viciousness of the press. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, check out one of the other videos you see on your screen. You won't want to miss it.